watched a basketball game, a hockey game, a tennis match, whatever it might be, whenever they interview the winning team or the winning player, they always say, I couldn't have done it without my coach. That is because the coach helps you become a better version of yourself. A coach helps you do things that you didn't even know you could do. That is what a great coach does. It's the human stuff. Now, when we think about technology, right, I mean, think about, for example, the stereotypical role that most leaders have. It could usually be broken up into two buckets. Leaders have to make decisions, right? They have information, they have uh, all the connections, they, they make the decisions because they know everything, they sit higher up at the, at the food chain. That's one job of the leader. The second job of the leader is to get people to move in the direction of that decision. What we already see now is that technology and AI is augmenting a lot of the decision-making stuff. You can imagine where it's going to be in 10 years. If you are a bad leader and all you do is focus on telling other people what to do, the command and control, I made the decision, you follow my decision, if technology will augment much of that, what value do you have to the organization? None. But if you are a good leader and you also focus on this human side, now all of a sudden your value in the company goes up tenfold. So the coach is a lot of this human stuff that matters. And a lot of people believe that one of the greatest coaches ever of any sport was John Wooden, a.k.a. the Wizard of Westwood. And he was the coach of UCLA men's basketball team during the 1900s mid-1950s. And he led UCLA to 10 college championships, including an unheard of seven in a row. And John did a couple of things which I thought were fascinating. The first thing that John did is that he believed that in order to be a great ball player, you have to be a great human being. And so what that means is that he understood the players on his team, not just as ball players, but as human beings. As leaders, you need to understand your employees, not just as employees, but as human beings. What they care about, what they value, what matters to them. You can't just look at them as players on the court. The other thing that John did is that he focused on the strengths of his players. He knew, for example, that you can't have a team where everyone is an all-star. You might have members of your team who are good at specific things. So, for example, in John's case, there would be players that can only make a basket from one part of the court. But if you put them in that one part of the court, they'll nail that shot almost every time. So when he would design plays, he would design a play so that during the game, that player would end up in that particular spot on the court with the ball so that they could make the basket. He focused on their strengths. Being a coach means, probably above all, that you help make other people more successful, even if it means more successful than you. Now, how many of you have kids? Okay, a lot of people. Now, how many of you, when your child does something that you couldn't do, or when they do something better than you, how many of you look at your kid and say, what the hell? I couldn't do that. What are you doing better, better than me in that? You, you flick them over. <laughs> you don't. When your child does something better than you, you look at them with a sense of a pride and accomplishment and, you know, wow, I helped raise you and now you're doing something better than me. That is the role of a coach. When somebody becomes more successful, even more successful than you, you look at them with a sense of pride. Coaching means you help make other people more successful. Right? That's what it ultimately comes down to.